In this video, we're going to start learning about exponents and rules of exponents. Um, there's five rules total that we'll be dealing with. We're going to do two of the five today. So we're going to learn about the product of power rule and the quotient of power rule. Um, remember, product means multiplication, quotient means division. So your objective is that you can explain the vocabulary exponents, which you may already be familiar with. Um, apply the product of power rule, explain the product of power rule, apply the quotient of power rule, and explain the quotient of power rule. So what are exponents? Well, in exponents, we have three vocab words, base, exponent, and power. The base is a bigger number and is what's being multiplied. So over here, I have an example, 2 to the 4th. My base is 2. It's telling what this expression means when I have 2 to the 4th. It means 2 times 2 times 2, 4 times. I know I need to do it 4 times by the number up here, which is called the exponent. It is a small number and tells me how many times to multiply. This does not mean 2 times 4. We would write that as 2 times 4, which would be 8. Um, exponents are also called powers. It's just another name for the exponent. So if you say the fourth exponent or the fourth power, you are correct. And then with this, we have vocab words. Um, different exponents or some exponents have special names, like x squared when it's taken to the second power, or it's x to the second power. When it's a 3 in the exponent, it's x cubed, or x to the third power. And then after that, um, we just say x to whatever power it is. So here would be to the fourth power, and x to the fifth would be x to the fifth power, and so forth. So let's look a little more closely. Um, have you looked before I actually teach you the rule? If I have 3 to the 5th and 3 to the 2nd, and I want to write this as 1 base and exponent, well here, this means 3 times 3, 5 times. Over here, we have 3 times 3, 2 times because of my exponent. Well that gives me a total, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 3 to the seventh. Over here, 10 squared means 10 times 10, and 10 to the fourth, it's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, and 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10. Well, if I want to write this as a single base and exponent, I have a total of 9 tenths, so this is 10 to the ninth. Now, on this one, I have different numbers um, or different bases being multiplied. But I have 2 to the 3rd, which means it's 3 2's being multiplied. And then I have 3 squared, which means it's 2 3's being multiplied. And I have 2 to the 4th, which is 4 2's being multiplied. And 3 to the 5th, I'm going to write down here since I ran out of room. Well, if I want to write this as bases and exponents, um, I have to put together who is alike. So I need to put my 2's together, and I have a total of 7 2's, so that's 2 to the 7th. And here I have a total of 3 7's. So my expression is 2 to the 7th times 3 to the 7th. Over here, I have 4 to the 3rd, so I have 4 times 4 times 4. 5 squared, that's 5 times 5. 5 to the 4th, that means I'm multiplying 5 4 times. And then this is just one single 4. So I need to put together um, the like bases. I have how many 4's are being multiplied? That is 4 to the 4th. How many 5's are being multiplied? That is 5 to the 6th. And you might see some patterns with the exponents. If you kind of notice on this last example, I have 4 to the 3rd, and this is 4 to the 1. Well, that means I have a total of 4 4, so that's 4 to the 4th. Here, I have 5 squared and 5 to the 4th. 2 plus 4 is 6. This tells me I have a total of 6 5's being multiplied. So I'm adding the exponents. Here, I'm dividing my 2's. So in the numerator, I have one big fraction. That means I have... 5 2's being multiplied. In the denominator, I have 2 2's. Well, if you think about these as individual fractions, 
2 divided by 2, if I reduce this fraction, these both become 1. I have can do it one more time, and this also becomes 1. Well, 1 times 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives me 2 to the third, because I'll have really 2 to the third, 2 times 2 times 2, and 1 times 1, anything times 1 is what else? And then over 1, but you don't need to write the 1 when you're dealing with a fraction when it's in the denominator, because 2 to the third divided by 1, you should recognize is just 2 to the third. So in the next problem, I have 2 to the third and 2 to the sixth. Well, anytime I have one in the uh, two in the numerator and two in the denominator, they simplify out to be one. So that simplifies to be one, and that simplifies to be one. So this is one times one times one. So in my numerator, I have one times one times one, which is one. In my denominator, I have two times two times two, which is two to the third. So then on my last example, Writing now is repeated multiplication. I have two times two, six times. And then I have times three threes, three to the third or three cubed. I have two squared, so that's two twos in the denominator, and three to the fifth. Well, then I can start simplifying which ones are going to divide out to be one. Well, I have a pair of twos, so that's one. Another pair of twos makes one both are ones and then I have no other twos that will simplify out and then I have threes so this pair of threes these become one these become one and lastly one more set of threes become one so if I want to write my final answer the ones simply just kinda not really disappear but we don't need them because anything times one is the other thing so I have two to the four twos so that's two to the fourth my numerator and then in the denominator, I have two threes, so that is three squared. Now examining these three examples, you might notice, what am I doing to my exponents? Well, I have five on top, two in the bottom. Five minus two is three, where is two to the third? Here, I have two to the third to the six. Well, six minus three is three, so I have three twos in the bottom because I have more twos in the denominator than I do in the numerator. Here, six minus two is four. Where is my two to the fourth? More twos in the numerator than the denominator. And then the threes, I have more threes in the denominator, five in the denominator and three in top, so that's three squared in the denominator. So these, what I just showed you, are the product of power rules and quotient of power rules, trying to give you an example of where these rules are coming from. Well, the product of power rule, remember product means multiplying. Anytime you multiply two with the same base, if they do not have the same base, this rule does not apply. So if I have a base of x to the m, and I'm multiplying it by another exponent where the base is x to the n, I have mx's here, I have nx's here, so that gives me x to the m plus n. You add your exponents. Again, you could think of this, you have so many m's, x's, dot, 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 you don't know how many times, so many n, and then you just add the two, how many x's you have to get this expression. Now, the quotient of power rule, which remember quotient means division, is what we saw in just the previous slide, is when you divide. And again, they need to have the same base for us to apply this rule. So if I have x to the m over x to the n, so I am dividing, well, the rule states is x to the m minus n. I like to think of it as who has more. If the numerator has more, the x's or whatever we have end up in the numerator. If the denominator has more, 
then how many are left over end up in the denominator, and then we're just left of one in the numerator. So I, I just kind of think of subtraction, but it's not always that it's going to be in the numerator. So you really just need to think about what is going on. So let's apply these rules with a few examples. So notice I say I write it out as repeated multiplication. I am going to stress this for you to do this in your work too, and actually I have it in the directions, because it gets you used to what the rule is actually saying instead of just memorizing the rules, um, which is not always a good thing because then you lose why the rule is true. So here you're going to write this out as repeated multiplication like I did in the example. So I have y to the fifth. So I want you to write out five y's. and y to the eighth. There will be a point that you will not have to do this anymore. And however, if I feel that you do not understand, oops, I need one more y, um, I will make you write out each problem until I feel that you know the rules and why the rules are true. So here I add up how many y's I have. I have a total of 13 y's. B, I have two k's and then 8k's. You don't need the multiplication sign in between to kind of save you time. One, two, three, four, eight, and then I just have one more single k. So I add up how many k's I have and that gives me to the 11th, which 2 plus 8 and then everything always has an exponent. That one is kind of invisible, the invisible one, but there's still one k there so that's k to the 11th. C and D is why it becomes important to write it out because this is where students tend to um, make mistakes when they're doing their work. Here I have a 5. Now the 5, I only have one of them. This is 5 to the first. I have 12 C's. The exponent only goes to one thing. It does not go through a whole bunch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Over here, I have only one, two, this is two, or negative two, this is, but then I have three C's. All right, so you are multiplying. So when we have numbers, we multiply them together. This is five times negative two, which is negative 10. How many C's do we have? We have a total of 15. Again, you're multiplying here, so that's why I got 5 and negative 2. You're not adding. So similarly, on D, I have negative 3, 2 G's, and H. I have 7 G and 8 H's. And I'm going to write the other one down here. I have negative 2, 4 G's, 9 E's. That's nine, and then three H's. All right. So I have my numbers. We're, we always multiply numbers out. So I have negative three times seven times negative two. Um, that gives me forty-two. How many G's do I have total? I have two here. 1, that's 3, plus 4 more, that's 7, so that's g to the 7th. How many h's? I have 1 plus 8, which is 9, plus 3 more is 12. And then I only have what's left, which is my 9 e's, e to the 9th. Um, the variables don't matter what order they're in. You could have went e, then h, and g. You always do put the number out in front because that is called a coefficient when the number is out in front. All right, so now let's look at our division. We have z to the eighth, so we have eight z's on top. We have z to the fifth. So just like I did in the slides a few times ago, we simplify. If we have one on top, one on the bottom, they all become one and that becomes 1. So 1 times z times z times z is z times z times z. So it's z to the third over 1, but we don't need the 1 in the denominator, that's z to the third. 
Here I have four t's in the numerator. I have six t's in the denominator. I can simplify. Four of them simplify out. I have one in the numerator, that's all that's left. And then I have two t's in the denominator, which is t squared, one over t squared. And again, you can kind of examine this problem. I have six t's in the bottom, four on top. Well, I have two more in the bottom than I do in the numerator. All right, so we're gonna do this one on the numerator. How many fours do I have? I don't have three of them, I only have one because there's only there's no exponent, so that means I have one four. Its exponent is one. But I have three m's and seven n's. Down here, I only have one eight. I have nine m's. And then I have three ends. All right, so let's take a look what simplifies your m's. So I have three m's that simplify out. So that becomes one. And I'm left with. So we have six m, m to the six in the denominator. My ends, I have one, two, three of them cancel. So that becomes one but I'm left with four n's in the numerator. And then I have four and eight. So let's write four and eight here. Four and eight, this is a fraction. So you kinda, if you think of it separately, all fractions, and you've been told this since elementary school, you need to reduce your fractions. We like fractions in lowest terms. So four eighths, if I would simplify that, becomes one half, so one times n to the fourth is n to the fourth, and then I'm left with a two, m to the sixth. This is completely simplified. So you have to reduce your fractions. All right, so then here I have three a's, a b, and nine c's. I have seven a's, five b's, and four C's. All right, so canceling out. I'm left with four A's in my denominator. My B's, I only have one that simplifies. So I'm left with four B's in my numerator. This is one times one. And then I have four C's that cancel. So I'm left with a C to the fifth in my numerator. All right, so on I, again, when we get to the bigger ones, this is where it's really helpful to write it out. That's why I kind of started doing this repeated multiplication. So you have a four. We only have one four. That three goes to the M. So it's one, two, three M's, seven N's. All right. And then, if you think of fractions, we're multiplying two fractions, and you learn when you learn fractions, you multiply across. So I actually have four ends on top here. All over eight p's. The number negative 12, so I'm gonna put in parentheses so I don't get it mixed up. I have one m because that two goes with the P's. All right, so let's start simplifying. Let's start with the M's. Looks like I have three on top, one on the bottom, so only one simplifies. So I have M squared. Let's look at your N's. Looks like we don't have any in the denominator, so I just look at how many I have left in the numerator. and looks like we have 11 of them. Down here, I can look at my p's. We don't have any in the numerator, so I just put together how many p's I have in my denominator. That's p to the 10th. 
And then I have the 4 and the negative 12. Now I told you on a previous slide the numbers always go in front. So 4 goes here and negative 12 goes here. Alright, so again, since you've been in elementary school, your teacher's been telling you to reduce your fractions. So we need to reduce the fraction for negative 12, which this is 1 third. So I have m squared n to the fourth, p to the tenth, and then negative 3 all front. I don't need that one. It's the same concept. 1 times n squared is m squared. Alright, and just for to make this video a little shorter, we're going to cut out j. Um, it might be a good practice to do it if you want to do it on your own and see if you got it. Your final answer should come out to be k to the 14, um, l to the 6, and then you have m to the 4th in denominator. So try that one on your own and see if you come up with that answer. Be a good practice or check to see if you're for your understanding. Alright, so review. You need to know your vocab. Um, we'll use those terms a lot. Your base, your power, your exponent. Um, you have two rules, the product of power rule and the quotient of power rule, which you're going to be used more and more frequently, but you essentially, when you multiply two with the same bases, you add the exponents. If you divide two with the same bases, this means you subtract your exponents. And they need to have the same bases to apply these rules. Um, just a reminder to do your reflections, you get credit for watching this video.